Why has Rigetti Computing, a quantum computing company, been posting jobs on its career website for years? A lot of people have been talking about whether when companies actually end up posting for different types of positions or not, whether they're actually really demonstrating a viable commercial need that they're looking to expand into. And I think in the case of even like how I've drawn parallels across my channel between synthetic, the synthetic biology industry and the quantum computing industry, that there are actually a lot more similarities between these two indi industries, despite the fact that they are dependent upon very different technical scientific aspects and scientific sets of rules or axiomatic principles, if that's what you want to call them. And in the case of quantum computing, which I wanted to focus more on in this video, I was interested in talking about more about Rigetti Computing because I know about Rigetti Computing because I had even checked out their career website even like in January, you know, like uh, 2023 when I was first looking for a job after I got laid off from my most recent position <laughs> in December 2022 as an engineer at Aimdime, some startup, I guess we could call it, in Santa Barbara, California that I was working remotely for. And in the case of Rigetti Computing, I was really interested in talking more about my perception of their careers website and whether that's actually up to speed with the public perception of this company and whether they've been able to maintain the confidence of investors throughout the entirety you know, of the company leading or throughout the entirety of the history of the company, even after the IPO phase in which Rigetti Computing, unfortunately, like Zapata Computing, which have recently just ceased operations, has also been seeming to struggle a lot. And pretty much that's a lot of it is easily relating to the fact that quantum computing pretty much has an impossible time, unfortunately, for smaller or medium-sized companies. I'm not talking maybe about larger key industry players like Google, Quantum AI, IBM, Amazon, or NVIDIA. They have a lot of difficulty in terms of being able to synthesize and formulate different types of commercial goals that they can pursue. I mean, there are even some quantum computing companies that were talking about how they could expect quantum computing to be of some potential benefit or some potential use to help cure cancer. And I mean, that type of thing, it can be very offensive to market that off as a commercial need for any type of company, because a lot of individuals and a lot of people, they've, they've you know, their families have been completely torn apart from the death of a loved one from cancer or other types of diseases around that. I mean, even with myself and even almost in 2017, one of my, one of the members of my family almost had passed away and I didn't have any idea about it because my parents hadn't told me about what was exactly going on because I was away at school and I was taking a very difficult class and workload. And just when companies try to formulate commercial needs around this type of area, which is just like something that, I mean, it sounds good. Of course, it's a very great and commendable thing for any type of company to try to venture into the to the oncology space from the perspective of quantum computing. But when they're just trying to do it, like a lot of those other types of companies were just to try to get some little pop in evaluation or some little raise in, eva in, their, in the evaluation of their company. I mean, it just really goes to show about what are these companies actually really trying to do? And really, do they have any viable commercial needs that they can help us solve with quantum computers and with quantum algorithms in general? And in the case of Rigetti Computing, unfortunately, it really seems to be the case that it's really much more on the trend or in, you know, in the past or in the footsteps, we could call it, of Zapata Computing. Because to provide some perspective about how what happened to, to you know what has been happening to Rigetti Computing and also what's happened to Zapata Computing is really indicative of what could easily end up happening for more companies in the quantum computing industry, like I mentioned, the small and medium-sized ones, is that they just pretty much seem to run out of funding or they have a great difficulty or very strong difficulty in being able to maintain different types of commercial pipelines. And pretty much what happened in the case of Zapata was that they just had to cease operations altogether. And I mean, before they used to pay so much money and salary to individuals who are doing very theoretical minded work and they're pretty much writing mathematical papers on quantum information, which is even very similar to a lot of the work that I did that I've never been paid a penny for. But these types of individuals, when they were just a few years ahead immersed in the quantum computing industry, when they were when they were able to make use of some of the salary or some of the funds from investors for investigating theoretical aspects of quantum information, that's not really constituting at all 
a, you know, a commercial guideline for introducing some type of product or being able to diversify some type of new stream of revenue that a company can try to introduce into the quantum computing industry and overall into the tech industry as a whole. And I think it's really interesting to keep into mind all these characteristics of the quantum computing industry, especially when it comes to Rigetti computing, because Rigetti has had some positions like like how they had, for instance, a future open position of interest that they've had for years on their website. And it's like with their stock doing this poorly and how there's been a lot more skepticism that's been spread upon or within the within different companies and their smaller and mid-sized companies and their commercial app operations in the quantum computing industry. You know, it's like, obviously that's not really going to give a lot of confidence to whatever commercial goals or potential objectives that Rigetti Computing is trying to say that it can accomplish through its next generation quantum computing platform or whatever they're able to operate. Because I mean, it's just kind of funny how a company like Rigetti Computing they advertise that they have a nine qubit system that you can manipulate and be able to generate some type of novel measurements from. But it's like, why aren't they hiring more? Why aren't they pursuing more aggressive you know, plans for expansion? Because I really think that that demonstrates that not only obviously is their platform uh, with nine qubits, it's already, you know, a bit lower than whatever, you know, like 50 or 60 qubits and what Google Quantum AI and IBM have been doing for different types of research directions that they've been pursuing. But also they don't really have so much of an idea about how much noise can obviously be realistically injected into larger scale counterparts of this nine qubit system and this nine qubit platform that would allow them to be able to further commercialize their platform for additional use from other individuals and to be able to shape some novel near-term types of applications. And I think that that's really what the quantum computing industry is struggling for. And I think that, unfortunately, I don't at all mean to be negative or pessimistic, but just rather drawing upon my experience of making use of quantum algorithms and realizing their limitations and how there's a lot of difficulty in terms of commercializing quantum computing to the extent that many companies have been talking about for several years, even like some of them as long as 10 years ago, is that it just really seems difficult to be able to determine how logical computation can be scaled up to hundreds of thousands of logical qubits, because I really hope that there could be some significant breakthrough in, in which I would anticipate that really Google Quantum AI would be the company in the, as the lead, as the industry leader in this area, pretty much in the world, in my opinion, in my strong belief, that could actually maybe take more of a strong attempt and try to scientifically, uh, you know, investigate different types of systems that they would be able to further investigate and how that would how that would impact the near term, the set of near term applications that could be tried out on a quantum computer. But just a matter of the fact is that. I just think that it's a complete joke and it's a complete farce that Rigetti Computing, this quantum computing company, has had certain positions open up on its website for years. And it's like undoubtedly, especially given the sentiments surrounding the labor market in today's job market and labor sector, thousands of people have applied to some of those jobs and never to hear back. And I just think that on, on top of that, it's really disingenuous from the executives at uh, Rigetti Computing and other types of quantum computing companies and, you know, even in parts of the tech sector as well, because some companies, they just really, you know, they post many different types of positions that they never ended up intending intending to hire for. And a lot of it can just be, you know, in a sense, sometimes it's smoke and mirrors. You know, it's like it's really trying to distract from what's actually going on and to prevent the public from being able to assess about the commercial viability about one company, like especially in the quantum computing industry. And I think that, unfortunately, even if companies are still trying to really, you know, hire less or trying to purportedly give off, uh, you know, the type of the type of feeling to the public or the type of sentiment to the public that they're able to hire more aggressively in different types of areas. I think it's going to be a completely different story about what actually ends up happening, because even if one company tries to cover for itself, it's not going to allow for each copy each company to cover itself in the exact same way or to try to continue you know buoying up optimism or you know uh you know a positive sentiment for whatever operations or business business objectives that the company is trying to pursue in the short term and i think that inevitably there could be some additional cracks in the quantum computing industry or points of pressure beyond say what you know has been 
Zapata Computing having to cease operations or even IBM having to change uh, commercial uh, commercial uh, its commercial roadmap, roadmap for quantum computing, or even like in the case of Rigetti Computing about how the fact that they've had some types of jobs on their career website for years and it still hasn't ended up being hired for. I mean, like, I don't understand because the fact that even Rigetti Computing is still trying to be open to the possibility of a remote job, like how they even indicated on their career website that I was just double checking today before making this video to make sure that I still had the most accurate information when I'm making this type of content and discussing the quantum computing industry in general, that it's like, obviously, you know, they're trying to act like they're actually willing to pay someone for a remote type of position. Like, I really feel like what the, you know, what types of funds or what type of capital any type of company is trying to allocate for an individual for a remote position in 2024, let alone probably what it's going to be in 2025. It's like zero to none. Like there are very few remote jobs available because even if there are posting for remote jobs available, it's completely a different situation as to whether a company would actually end up following through with those hiring plans. Because so many companies, they talk about the fact that you know, they may be open to remote or hybrid remote or maybe even in person. And when they list all of the possibilities across the board about what they're open to, it's obvious that even if there is, say, hypothetically speaking, some individual who's very talented and who could do the job remote, even if maybe they're not in the exact, you know, geographical area that the company wants to hire a remote individual from, the company could easily end up going with someone who just wants to have a regular job or, you know, you know, a job in which they can have the person in office every day. And I mean, I'm not against that at all. I actually really think that if maybe some of the work wasn't remote, maybe things could have been better in terms of the overall perception of the labor sector and what individuals actually feel like when they're looking for a job, because I don't think that any individual is, um, <laughs> is like optimistic to be in the job search. And I mean, it's funny because even other types of videos and content I've made across my channel in which I talked about my very strong feelings and my perspective that in my opinion, my very humble and strong opinion that, um, you know, that, uh, that the prospects for searching for employment have been hopeless and a few people dislike those videos. And it's like, what do those individuals think I should feel about having to be unemployed for two years in this long of a period of time and how that actually reflects on different types of companies within industries that I have a lot of research experience with not hiring individuals, despite the fact that they're significantly advertising for these positions and they're trying to really always draw our attention to the fact that they're in a very strong period of growth. I mean, it's all fake, you know, and I don't think that it's actually, unfortunately, a lot of times I don't even think that this is reflecting actually any legitimate business need. It's just a fake tactic and a completely fake ploy for many different types of companies, especially in the case of Rigetti Computing, for just trying to show that despite the fact that they're having a disappointing earning earning report or that their stock or whatever form of security they're offering is doing very poorly, they're, str they're still trying to grab things by a few hairs at a time to still try to save face, which I mean, so many with so many companies trying, trying to do this in this day and age, I mean, it's just like completely a farce. And I really think that it's just time, more time so for executives to just accept more responsibility for what's happening in their companies. And just at least try to be more truthful and faithful or, you know, straightforward with the public about what are the business prospects for different types of companies, including theirs.